from a fallout shelter in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. Near the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio, welcoming to our microphone once again. Seth Green, good to see you. Good to see you, too. What's going on? Oh, you know, just uh, enjoying this basement. <laughs> <laughs> You're not kidding. This is a straight-up fallout shelter. I yes, think it if is. a nuclear holocaust happened above us, we'd be fine. And although you know where we are, we're not allowed to say where we are. Fair enough. Because Deep the, underground will, well, will serve. Well, the movie studio here, that uh, where we work, uh, does, of course, be responsible for such fine Oscar-winning fare as Jackass and Jackass Part 2. <laughs> uh, they are embarrassed by the Tom Likas show, and they do not want us to say where we are. So we don't. Well, that's politics for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there'll be a Tom Likas show movie. Um, at least it won't be made here. You'd be surprised. Stern did that private parts. I never thought that would happen. He did that here, too. <laughs> we, here, were here more embarrassing. we were more embarrassing than Howard Stern. <laughs> that, that It's unbelievable. I feel for you. Thank you. So... <laughs> So yeah, you, you're still doing Robot Chicken, and it's still a huge hit, and everybody knows it. Uh, people talk about it all the time. It's yeah, it's swelled nicely. It's selling like hotcakes. The original DVD sold like crazy. Yeah, we might actually be outselling hotcakes at this point. I'm not sure. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> Summer months, it's difficult to sell them. <laughs> now, for people who haven't seen Robot Chicken, because it is on late at night, and it is yeah. on, uh, you know, Comedy Central, which oh, it's know. on the Cartoon Network. Oh, it's Cartoon Adults Network. Right? Yeah. Oh. It's a common mistake. Well, you know why it's a common mistake? I'm going to tell you why there's a common mistake, and I'll tell you why I make them mistake. because I watch TiVo. Oh, yeah, me too. And I don't know what channel anything is on. I have on no anymore. idea. This I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I see your show, and I've seen you many times uh, on other shows as well, but I can't tell you what channel I've seen you on. Yeah, TiVo has uh, ruined any kind of network branding, I think. There isn't any. But I love it. It's such a crack-like addiction. I'm like, go get this for me, TiVo. It's great. <laughs> but, I mean, honestly, there are some networks I just completely uh, mix up. I mix yeah. up E and Bravo because uh -huh. they have a lot of the same kind of shows. Uh -huh. I keep thinking the girls next door is on Bravo. I'm pretty sure it's uh, on A&E. It is? No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, just E. Is it? Or T and E? T and A and E. Yes. <laughs> we are on the same wavelength. <laughs> Exactly. But now tell us about Robot Chicken. Uh, Robot Chicken is a stop-motion animated sketch comedy show, and it's uh, really offbeat and silly and strange. And uh, if, if, if for people who haven't seen the show, you, you know, it's stop-motion. Yeah. How long does it take to make one of these episodes? It takes a long time. I mean, uh, the actual animation for an individual episode is about six days, but we start a season. Uh, well, we started this season in January. We wrote for 22 weeks, and uh, we are about halfway through right now. So we'll finish post in December. And you're doing 22 shows. Uh, 20 shows. 20 shows. Yeah, 20 shows. And it takes 52 weeks to do 20 shows. Roughly, it's it's roughly 11 months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Holy somewhere God. I find the time to be a movie star. Unbelievable. <laughs> now tell us about that. Uh, you've been. Uh, I I saw you on Entourage. I mean, oh, I, see, yeah. I see you all over the place. Oh, thanks, man, uh, for watching. Yeah. No, I'm uh, uh, acting whenever I can on on stuff that I think is cool and important. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually working right now on a on a an independent film starring a, a, a John Travolta and Rob Williams of a small, uh, fledgling indie company called Disney. <laughs> yeah, we're really. We can say they'll... Disney on the air, by the way. I'm hoping we're... they'll put some ad dollars behind it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get to play a, uh, you know, kind of uptight guy who hates kids who has to take care of kids. Wow. Yeah. Is his name Tom Likas? I think it is, yeah. I'm actually playing you. <laughs> I hope you don't sue for defamation. What the hell? 
<laughs> That's cool. And uh, to tell us about the script, tell us about the. Uh... It's a, it's a, it's kind of tough to explain. But the, the basic premise is to get uh, Robin Williams and John Travolta taking care of kids. Uh, the two That's of them great. are business partners, and uh, it starts out with Robin getting divorced for, uh, after 14 years, a loveless, miserable marriage, and uh, Travolta is his like you know womanizing uh, eternal bachelor best friend. And um, on the on the night that he gets divorced, he meets a woman and uh, falls for her and gets married. So instead of celebrating his independence, he marries another woman and then in the morning realizes a terrible mistake that he's made and uh, splits from her and spends the next seven years just burying himself in business, trying to get their company off the ground. And eventually he has, you know, misgivings about having given her up, tries to track her down. Writes a long letter, never should have left you, that kind of thing. This is all in the first, like, ten minutes of the movie. <laughs> and then she uh, <laughs> and then she shows back up and says, by the way, uh, we had twins yeah. from that night, and I never told you because you abandoned me. But now that you're saying you want me back, I thought it was fair to tell you we have children. <laughs> and then she winds up going to jail, and he has to take care of the kids. Uh, you know what's interesting? This seems like a golden age of comedy for, <laughs> for movies. Yeah. There are so many big hit movies uh, that, that are comedies. Yeah. And yet, television, they say sitcoms, with few exceptions, are, are dead. It's the format, I think, more than the material. I think people have just kind of fallen out of favor with that four-camera format. You know, a live studio audience, a laugh track. Or maybe it just depends on the show. Like, How I Met Your Mother and Two and a Half Men seem to be international hits. And I can't understand it. Um, <laughs> but that's, you know, it's it, it's just like what you want to watch at night. And a lot of people love comedy. Yeah, they do. Is but, that a cohesive statement? But, that <laughs> but, then you look at, you look at, but then you look at the shows that get nominated for Emmy Awards, like The Office and 30 yeah. Rock. They don't get all the awards and they don't uh, get all the big ratings. It's weird. You know, Judd Apatow's shows, both uh, Freaks and Geeks and yeah. uh, and Undeclared, got nominated for stuff and they both got canceled. It, it, it's, it's a weird discrepancy between what the critics like, what will get awards, and what will actually get an audience. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Two and a Half Men has been pilloried by the critics. <laughs> yeah. And it not doesn't like, seem to stop it. <laughs> but not only does it get big ratings when the shows are, are first run, it gets big ratings and reruns. Huge ratings. Yeah. Bigger, no, 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 no. Bigger ratings when CBS reruns the shows in the summertime. Oh, really? It's the number two or number three show of the summer. That's now you look, crazy. you look at other shows that get a lot of attention, I'm like, oh, heaven forbid, Ugly Betty or one of these shows. Uh, those shows, the minute they run out of new episodes, nobody's watching anymore because mm, they don't watch the reruns. Well, be, well, because why would you watch a rerun? It's like a, it's like a soap opera. Right. So you already know what's going to happen. I've watched a couple of... Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine rewatching, but I have watched Ugly Better and I thought it was funny. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not... And suddenly we were fist fighting. I don't know. I'm not gay. I just feel gay watching. I'm watching <laughs> it and I feel gay. It makes you feel gay. By the way, I tell you That's, so, I think that there was their ad slogan. Too. It, does, it does make you feel Ugly gay. Betty. Get in touch with you in a gay. Now I was I was in Paris. I guess people watching Ugly Betty in Paris too. There were women wearing Ugly Betty glasses. This was like a fashion statement. Really? Now. Have you seen this? Those those frames. I saw it in uh, Reality Bites when Janine Garofalo wore them. <laughs> <laughs> but she wasn't she wasn't the woman of my dreams. <laughs> So, so when you try to get when, when you try to get a comedy up and running, what, what's that process like? I'm curious about how that works. Well, it really depends on. I mean, to get anything up and running, you gotta have something first and uh, be in love with it and just be willing to fight uh, against anybody's perception of it or anybody's opinion of it. Be able to explain wh what what I've had to do in the last three years when I'm kind of, you know, trying to firm up my my role as a producer is just understanding how to sell things better to people because it's less about the product than how you can sell it to the people that will distribute it. And then ultimately, it's their uh, job to figure out how to sell it to the people. Yeah. So when you pitch anything to anybody, you have to have an entire game plan set before you and say, okay, this is exactly what I'm going to sell. This is why it'll work. This is who it's going to connect with. This is how you sell it to them. And this is how much money we'll make. <laughs> my, That's my, how you get something going. My perception of comedies, uh, when you were talking about movie comedies, is that it's less about the plot. With, that's for the the plot is for the marketing people to, to to hang a poster out about. It's about the jokes. I mean, if you've got good jokes, it really doesn't matter what the plot is. It's tough too. You know, um, a movie like Superbad was sold on a couple of moments, and the plot of that movie is two kids uh, on their last day of school before they go to college. That's the plot, and they have to get beer for a party. Right. That is the entire plot. And yet, I love that movie because the execution is so flawless. Yeah, but that, that's, uh, I think, really the best comedies. It's really all about just uh, having the jokes, and you're just writing like, some loose premise to well, string a bunch of jokes together. It's tricky, too, because, you know, a movie like Hot Rod that I actually really liked, uh, Andy Samberg's movie, the the trailers never did any kind of justice to what that film was because the whole movie is tone. 
you know? So you watch it from the beginning to the end, and in keeping with the tone and all the circumstantial jokes, the movie's hilariously funny. But any single one of the gags that they pulled out for the trailers did not look funny to me. I think Andy Samberg is really talented, very yeah. funny guy. Yeah, he and his guys are they're awesome. Yeah. I, I always wonder how he'll translate to movies, because I've seen his stuff on the internet. I thought he did really... I mean, I like that movie a lot, Hot Rod. Yeah. Um, I thought it was I thought it was really funny. I thought he did a great job with it. Yeah, I think he's... he's And, and physical comedy, he's great at that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's funny. I sometimes as as much as I enjoy some of these comedies, then you see the big budget movie like that, Evan Almighty, which was like the biggest bomb I didn't of the see year. It, wasn't yeah. It? Well, you know, you spend that much money on a movie, it's either got a. There's almost no way it can make its money back. Yeah. I, well, big budget comedies. What's the point of that? I mean, if you don't have great jokes, uh, special effects are not going to sell a movie. I agree. I don't think so. Unless it's Transformers. Unless it's Transformers. <laughs> exactly. We'll take a break. We'll come back with Seth Green. We'll take some telephone calls here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Uh, you can uh, see uh, Robot Chicken, of course, and it's on comedy. <laughs> Did it again. It's if you want to blow off cartoon. the TV experience altogether, just Cart go by the DVD you know, season one and my... two available in stores now. <laughs> it's, it's on uh, uh, Cartoon Network. That's right. And it's uh, <laughs> Saturday through Wednesday at 1130 Eastern Time. Yeah, new episodes are on Sunday at 1130. And it's very hard um, with, with any cable network now, by the way, to figure out if you have direct TV. Many times they only have the East Coast feed. Yeah. So you, you think a show's on at 1130 and it's really on at 830? Well, luckily they rerun it. It's on in the 830 and the 1130. Perfect. Yeah. So you'll see it at 1130 either way. They're thinking ahead, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> right. We'll take a break. We'll come back with Seth Green and your telephone calls coming up. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Hello. Are you deaf? I'm on a car phone, Tom. It's the Tom Likas. I'm sorry? Show. Like a show at one 800 5800 tom That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. And we are here with Seth Green on your telephone calls. Let's take some. Woo! For God's sake, taking calls. Here comes Dave on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hey, uh, Seth. Yes, Dave. Hey, if you're trying to get financing or pitch a comedy or whatever, is, is the worst thing you can say to executives is that it's smart? <laughs> really depends on the executive. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you got to just have material you believe in and be able to sell it hard. Are you out pitching comedy to executives? Hey, no, I'm not. I'm just wondering um, about everything that's been coming out. Taking lately. the common man under your wing. Um, about everything that's been coming out. Yeah, I mean it's goofy, but it's not. It's not tapping into like you know. I don't know older movies that that seem to have a little bit more sting to it as far as. Yeah, it's um, weird. It's weird the way audiences are reacting. You know, they're informing the studios by what they go to see. And you could yeah, argue well, that there's a, a dearth of available entertainment, but at the same time, people are showing up well, to the, see Well, the, the audience for movies is the youngest it's ever been now, and yeah. I think that probably has something to do with it. If you're looking for uh, the kind of dialogue they used to have in Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn movies, uh, forget it. Uh, those it's on days, TV, too. You know, no one's making the shows that Norman Lear would make, and you, you could argue that All in the Family wouldn't even be on the air right now. Mm -hmm. Who would tune in? Yeah, I just I like the way they're making a lot of money. I mean, I like when comedies make a hundred million. I think that's great. Remember when a hundred so million meant, meant something? I remember when Ghost made a hundred million after four months in the theaters, and people were like, "It finally crossed a hundred million." And now, if you don't make a hundred million in your first weekend, you're a failure. That's right. <laughs> so kind of a you're going straight to DVD. Twisted sense of success. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, sir. Okay. Good, good luck. I would not. Uh, I would uh, not avoid saying it's smart. I think smart is uh, still a valuable thing. AJ, you're on with Seth Green. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you doing? Do you care? Hell yeah. Doing great. <laughs> Chilling out here in the IE? <laughs> <laughs> He's calling from the 909. 951, to be exact. Oh, the 951. Is IE Ooh. Inland Empire? Yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hell of a commute, my friend. <laughs> what up, Seth? What up? How you doing? Strong, my friend. I'm doing <laughs> curls as we speak. How's it, how's, it, how's it going with Austin Powers Four? Oh, you know, I'm just uh, taking the taking the helm on that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you know, I heard uh, Mike Myers and some of the Shrek press talk about doing Austin Powers Four, and everybody in, in the country's ears perked up. 
and I've been fielding questions ever since. There's no uh, uh, legitimacy to it yet. <laughs> right on. Hey, I'm uh, starting a band. I'm going to uh, call it Angry 10-Inch. What do you think about that? <laughs> I think you have a shot. <laughs> Love you, Tom. Take me out Kobe style and with an old school at the end. Here you go, AJ. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. We're here with I love that people request that too. <laughs> they do. <laughs> They're like, "This is a perfect send off for me." <laughs> this is how I want to be remembered. <laughs> the thing is, Kobe style is is so old; it goes back so many years. That was Kobe's press conference after he. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, poor guy. After he uh, has an allegation against him. The allegation of and people the still request that. unlawful rear entry. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I thought we had a deal. <laughs> Well, I just want to offer you a new deal. <laughs> Steve, on the Tom Likas show for Seth Green. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Steve. How are you, buddy? Great. First time, long time. Seth, I love you, man. Oh, That's thanks. Funny as hell. Thanks, man. What I wanted to ask you is your entourage storyline kind of fell off the roof after you got punched out by Johnny Drama in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> are you coming back, and are you going to come back for event, Johnny? Uh, you know, we talked. Actually, it was uh, E that, that got the first hit on that. Uh, but uh, we talked about that, and then it's a matter of, like, what makes rational sense with the storylines that they're doing. Because that kind of that dynamic, you don't want to waste it. Um, and they had talked at one point... Um, Oh gosh, what's her name? Anna Faris is on right now, and they had her boyfriend show up and like pick a fight with E. And there was talk about me doing that, but it just doesn't make any sense. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to just shoehorn it in. You want to do something that makes sense. So definitely, definitely, man. We'd love to see you back on there, though. And Tom, oh thanks, man. Long time, brother. Love you. Could you take me out with the bong rip and a thank you, Jesus? Yes, I can, Steve. <laughs> He's sweet. It's a long one, too. Thank oh, you, yeah. Jesus. There you go. Uh, Entourage, it's everybody's favorite show around here. Why, why is show. that such a good show? What is um, it about that show? Well, you know, nothing really goes wrong on that show. The guys always pull it out in the end. Yeah, that's Every true. Every episode you go, oh, no, the world is coming to an end. At the end of the show, they're like, just kidding. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson's your girlfriend. You're getting $10 million for the movie. And, by the way, we got into cans. <laughs> Oh, no, what are we going to do? Well, I guess we'll just smoke a bunch of pot and make $10 million and put this house up for sale and then get a new one tomorrow. <laughs> but it's it's great. I mean, you get, to see, you get to see a side of life that a lot of us don't get to live, you know? Well, uh, well by the way, it's uh, it's like my neighborhood. Every, every place on there is yeah. some uh, – I'm looking right down the hill at it. Uh-huh. So I feel like I'm watching like a film about my own neighborhood. It's bizarre. It's like Sex in the City for Los Angeles because it's all the hot spots and, you know, popular locales, whether it's Earth Cafe or whatever club it is, you know. Earth Cafe? How much do they pay for product placement on that show, by the way? At least, you know, <laughs> nothing. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that Earth Cafe is on every show. It seems to be now. You know why? Because it's got that patio. Yeah. Hot, hot girls pass by it all the time. Yeah. Easy to shoot, probably. Like, must be. I would imagine. The the no road is so easy to block off, so. Yeah, try shooting at Barney's Beatery, for example. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're here with Seth Green. Let's say hello here to Travis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. What's up, Seth? Tom? Hey, Travis. Are we fused together? Is that what's going to happen? <laughs> In a nuclear uh, incident. I got a quick question Tom, for you, Seth. Green, we're next to really fused. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, my question is, Greg the Bunny, um, uh -huh. what the hell happened to that? Uh, well, a, a couple things happened to that. It was uh, canceled by Fox. And then uh, and then we uh, did a couple of shows for the IFC, and now there's a, a really cool Fox DVD out, as well as an even cooler IFC DVD. Oh, really? If you, yeah, if you want to see Greg the Bunny's potential fulfilled, uh, get the IFC DVD, because they did a, a ton of cool bits um, after the Fox show that are just everything the Fox show should have been. Oh, crazy. Where can I get that? I assume uh, Amazon or any DVD store. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks. That's the only question I have. Tom, I'm... Uh, 
not a listener. I mean, I'm a listener of your show, but I'm not one of your followers, so I kind of despise you. But, so, you're, uh, so you're pussy whipped is what you're saying. Time. Yes. And your girlfriend told you to say that, right? Exactly. There we go. <laughs> well, when the rapture comes, I'll, I'll see you on the end of the river. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. There you go. He had to say that because his girlfriend was sitting right next to him. <laughs> this is Louis. Don't you, you have a huge uh, female following, though, don't you? Well, we do, but the thing is, it, I always say that women love being treated like crap, and that proves it because so many of them keep calling. Mm -hmm. They keep calling. They keep getting on the air. I keep treating them like crap. They keep calling back for more. It's a fascinating dynamic. It is. It? it really is. I mean, I don't endorse violence or... Uh, you know, I don't endorse, uh, you but know. A, but a vague disinterest seems to generate interest. That, but that's what it is. Yeah. Just be but, completely unreliable. The take it or leave it attitude. That's right. Okay. You're looking for love. Fine. Fall in love with somebody else. That's fine. But I will be your backdoor man. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Louie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, hey, Tom. Hey, Louis. I have a question for Seth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, Seth. Um, hey, Louie. <laughs> hey, um, you seen, remember, remember the episode on Robot Chicken where you had Calvin and Hobbes on it? I've completely forgotten that episode. You forgot that? <laughs> no, I'm joking. We actually got nominated for an Emmy for that episode. For that episode? Okay, I'm a huge Calvin and Hobbes fan. Me too. Anyways, um, like, did uh, Bill Watterson, knowing the way he is, he yeah. won't, like, merchandise anything. He's so t -shirts, unbelievably t -shirts. litigious, yeah. Oh, he's strict. So I was wondering, did he give you crap about um, the way, you know, doing that? We have not heard word one, and I really pray that we don't. It was a, a loving homage. We're all enormous Calvin and Hobbes fans. We we did it as delicately as possible because we felt like we had a funny comment to make, which is very different than merchandising something that's pure to him. It was more kind of taking an intellectual view of it and saying, you know, here is this kid who has this tiger that he believes is real, and they go on adventures, and how would that be perceived by his parents? Oh, okay, because, I mean, like, I don't know, like, with the way um, Bill Watterson is, he even said, like, he didn't want anybody to, like, give Calvin or Hobbes a voice. A voice, yeah. He thought he would ruin it. We, you know, I'll tell you what, we went around and around as far as who we were going to cast for that. We ultimately cast uh, Breckenmeyer and Dan Milano to play those voices, and we thought they did a way better job than anybody uh, we, we were thinking of. Um, but, you know, it's a delicate thing. You don't want to impart that uh, decision on his product, but at the same time, we felt like our joke was good. Okay. Well, you know, I thought I did a good job. I thought it was cool. Thanks, I mean, man. How'd you like that. the voices? What? How'd you like the voices? The voices? Um, I felt kind of like it was weird because, you know, when I read Calvin, I always have, you know, like my certain voice for Calvin and totally. my certain voice for Cobb, Hub. So when I read and when I saw it, it kind of like it was weird. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's jarring. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's, you know, I don't know. It's hard to explain. But I feel yeah, you. Man. We did our best. Different. No, you did a good job, though. I thought you guys did a great job. Thanks. I, mean, I love it, and I approved of it. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, man. But uh, anyway, no, we uh, haven't heard from him. All right. Well, thank you. Hi. Right. Thank you. Louis should get out more. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Brandon on the Tom Likas show. Hello, you're on with Seth Green. Am I on? You are on. Oh, sweet. This is my first time ever making on the radio. Making a phone call? <laughs> it's yep, a fantastic so communication yeah. device, and I highly recommend it. Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, well, Seth, I, or the Napster, you know, <laughs> how's the whole Brazilian job coming? You know what's funny is that is another myth of the entertainment industry. We uh, That movie's not in production. Are you serious? Fingers crossed that it ever makes it, but I think it's going to be a, a scheduling and, uh, and a budgetary nightmare, considering that it's like four years since we made the first one, and... Uh, everyone's got nominated for something or other since then. Charlie's won an Oscar. Mark Wahlberg got nominated for working with uh, what was it Scorsese? Uh, yeah, for The Departed. Yeah, it was awesome. I just watched his uh, recent movie, The Shooter. That was pretty. I thought pretty that was. BA. You know what it is that the sh if, have you seen Shooter? Anybody? Uh, yeah, I it's watched like a it straight up day. '80s Chuck Norris movie. Oh, really? It's a really like old fashioned action film where the guy is kind of you know, put upon, he's, he's uh, trapped and, and coerced into something and then framed for something that just goes and shoots and blows up everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and has a hot chick in the meantime. Yeah. It's really, yeah. but it is very traditional, like a like a Chuck Norris movie. I've always thought they should do one of those traditional action films, like kind of reinvent it for the mm -hmm. 21st century, with hip hoppers. I just think they should just read. <laughs> I really think that would be a great idea. They, but there's stuff like that, like waist deep and, oh, but you're saying like out and out. Out now, you know, like... He's like, a man that came to town. Yes. 
He didn't want to bother anyone, but you're, they you're, bothered him. You're like Black Death Wish or something. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good one. I'd like to see that. Brandon, thank you. Let's Write say- a letter to a parent. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Well, no, they they financed. Uh, and good afternoon, gentlemen. Doing great. And to you, sir. Um, you know, Seth, uh, I just want to know I'm a big fan of the Robot Chicken. It's great, great show. And, Thanks, uh, man. I hope like several DVDs come out of that. There are two DVDs available immediately for purchase. I have the first season. I'm still working on the second one. Um, but uh, how long you're you working on it? What do you mean you're working on it? Layaway? What's going oh, on? You're working on downloading it off the internet. Oh, <laughs> well, not, a, not exactly the DVD. He's on BitTorrent.com. That's I, I admire your piracy, you <laughs> ambitious young. Thief. That's great. What else do you have coming out that he can steal? Anything else? Uh, a new line of children's clothing. <laughs> Good luck. Catching it from oh, peeing a pod. That's great. Well, he's got uh, 14% already downloaded, and by uh, Sunday, you'll be up to about 70%. I'm getting the extras on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Deleted no. scenes, homie. In all honesty, you, you have a great show. It's original, yet hilarious. And, uh, I hope you... I appreciate your honesty. And, um, Tom, I just want to let you know, I'm a first-time caller. Um, I don't really... This is like the first time I've listened to your show, and uh, I have a girlfriend, but uh, everything you say is true, man, and I'm, I'm never getting married next to you. Well, that's good. Did you tell your girlfriend about that yet? <laughs> oh, I keep telling her, and she's just, I mean, she's, she's trying to... Uh, you'll you know, change. You'll I'm change. She wants to talk about kids and stuff, and I, I really don't want any kids, you know? I'm, I'm young. I'm... You know, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are not married, and they have several children. <laughs> uh, I ain't trying to get no kids. I think kids, it can work. I'm trying to have... I'm not trying to have any marriage, but uh, she doesn't seem to approve. But uh, you should just adopt a bunch of foreign babies. <laughs> it makes you seem philanthropic. Yes, as well as uh, you know, committal in one, right. in one sense or another. That's exactly right. By the way, uh, does, you see those pictures of of Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. You know, when they're going to Africa to adopt again, doesn't he look like a beaten dog now? Those photos, like in People magazine. Oh, Brad, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. He's a handsome guy. He is, but he just <laughs> he kind of slouches over. He kind of looks like, oh my god, we're going. You know to what? Adopt but he's the he's kid. the type oh, of guy geez. that has to like pretty himself down. Yeah, yeah well, you that's know what true. I'm saying? So he always like slumps his shoulders or has ugly facial hair. No, he looks great. I used to live up the block from Brad over uh, where he lives in that place, <laughs> in that area. I don't want to give that away, but uh, in the old BC. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, he just doesn't look like the same happy-go-lucky Brad anymore. Yeah. Not when I used to see him at the Mayfair Market all the time. Living with Angelina, that's really got to put a damper in you. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> She's so hideous on the eyes, you know. <laughs> Dramatically unappealing in a physical sense. Seth Green is here. He's the creator and executive producer of Robot Chicken. It's in its third season on Adult Swim on Cartoon Network. That's right, it's Cartoon Network. <laughs> they don't want you, they keep it a secret that it's Cartoon Network because they don't want the kiddies tuning in uh, when this stuff is on. But hey. It's Cartoon Network. That's where it is. What's weird is we have like I have like nine year olds come up to me and they're like, "I love Robot Chicken." And I'm of like, "Your mom, you your mom's letting you watch that?" And they're like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing about TiVo. I mean, it doesn't matter if it shows on at midnight or yeah. at two a.m. The, the kids s- know how to use TiVo. They come do. on, so these are the same parents that bought Eminem's records for their nine year olds. Like that Eminem, he's white. He must be relevant. <laughs> We'll take a break. Welcome back with your calls for Seth Green coming up. Tom like it. one 800 5800 Tom. Is she uh, good in bed? Oh, yeah. like his show. From Hollywood... The Tom like his show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. We are here with Seth Green. Had your telephone calls and there were so many of them. For God's sake, it's Adam. Hello. Yes. Busy over there, Adam. Yes. Uh, just want to say thank you, Tom, for being on and for coming down to Fort Worth this past Friday. I had a lot of fun. Um, we did too. It was exciting having you back in town. I, I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed introducing Russ uh, while I was there. I didn't actually introduce Russ because he wasn't ready to go on yet. But uh, down there with the Russ Martin Show band, and it was a lot of fun. It was a big crowd. It was a great event. I had a good time. Oh, very good time. A lot of uh, nice looking talent out there, also. Yes, there was uh, quite a lot of talent at that uh, show. There's no doubt about it. 
Yeah, and also I want to mention uh, Seth Green. That uh, first thing I saw him in was uh, Idle Hands. Oh, cool. And uh, it stuck with me, you know, the whole, uh, you know, pot and zombies and <laughs> death, you know, how it goes. Good to know. Thanks, uh, man. Jessica Alba, how was it working with her back in the day? Well, you know, she was 17 at the time, and there was a lot of MPAA concerns about the picture. <laughs> uh, but she's a, she's a sweet girl. I like her very much. And she's nice. only gotten all prettier. Right. Well, that's, that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you again, and Seth, keep making those movies, and Robot Chicken, man. Oh, thanks, man. I'll do my best. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Mike on the Tom Like a Show with Seth Green. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. All right. Hey, the whole world needs to know what a great guy Seth Green is. What? <laughs> I did a, uh, I was one of the camera guys on a movie he did called Can't Hardly Wait. What's your name? And Mike Cassidy. What's up, dude? Oh, boy. What a great guy this <laughs> Seth Green guy is. Let me tell you. This sounds like it. A... We had more laughs, more fun. It was barely work. That was a good time. Seth, that was amazing, bro. I wish everybody in Hollywood was as cool and stand-up as you, bro. Oh, thanks, man. We <laughs> made that movie with uh, with uh, uh, my buddy's wife and her partner wrote and directed it, and it was just a bunch of people that all knew each other making a movie, and the movie's about a party, so we just had a really That's good time. That's right. Together. Oh, man, Tom, it was unbelievable. It was nothing but shenanigans. Really? And, and there were quite Seth a few shenanigans. Just- Yes. Oh boy. And <laughs> Seth was just a real, a real great guy, and oh, thanks, uh, man. everybody in the film business was as cool as him. Uh, everybody would be uh, in the film business. <laughs> That's really sweet of you to say so. <laughs> right on. Well, Tom, listen, I'm a huge fan. I've been an avid listener for years and years, probably 12 years plus. Wow. So if if I could do something truly tasteless, I have not heard it myself. If you could take me out Arizona helicopter style, that would be huge. This is so <laughs> offensive. I can't believe when people request this. This may be the end of this thing. Well, he's taking okay, off, he's out. running. Okay, uh, now it's a foot chase. Okay, now he's jumping into another, another vehicle. vehicle. Okay, okay. All right, they're Doors closing open. in. Please, Looks okay. like they've... Oh, we're we're going to pull out. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't oh. know what has just happened right there. The helicopter get too close to the to the other paralyzed. helicopter. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is tasteless. That's tasteless. Nicely done, Mike. People keep asking for that. <laughs> you know, you that's why get... there are air traffic controllers. That's right. That's exactly right. By the way, if you listen to the end of that cut, you can hear the guy going. Ah! Oh, <laughs> you can hear that. Nice. That's like the the rushes from Twilight Zone. <laughs> Yes. It hasn't ended up on YouTube yet, has it? Yeah, I don't think so. Vic Morrow's head kind of popping off. It's pretty grotesque. Yeah, I know. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to, is that RN? RN? Hello? Yes. Yeah, is that your Arne, name? Uh, Working yeah, in a hospital? Yeah. Oh, Arnie. No, no, man. Arin. Arin. What yeah, kind of name is Arin? Yeah. What kind of name is it? What kind of name is it? Awesome name. That's what it's, it is. Uh, it's Armenian, actually. Oh, it's Armenian. All right. Does yeah. your last well, right. well, let me Armenian, give it, like let that. me give you the test. Does your last name rhyme with the word Armenian? No, I actually have a shortened last name because because oh, uh, yeah. your your grandparents went to Ellis Island or something like that. No, because when my dad moved to Iran, like the government gave him an issued last name. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that's hardcore. Yeah, pretty bad. Well, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right, Seth. How are you? Oh, and Tom, how are you? So far, so good. We're doing good. All right. So, um, hey, Seth, I'm going to be honest with you, all right? Take all right. this with a grain of salt. When, like, I first saw you around, like, in movies and whatnot, and, um, like, when Robot Chicken first came out, I kind of thought you were a tool. Yep, common perception, sure. All right, but then I started watching a little bit more as the show, like, matured and progressed. I think you're pretty funny now. And hearing you on the radio, you're really funny. Oh, thanks, man. You know, I aim to change people's opinions. <laughs> cool, cool. So, uh, here's my question. Um... I've been really into the show for a long time. Uh, I don't know if you heard of it. Probably have Sifla and Ollie. It got canceled. Oh, yeah. I like that show. That show is awesome. What do you think of it? I liked it. Did you ever watch uh, Wonder Showsen? Wonder Shows is badass. Yeah, it's similar. It's a similar kind of thing. I thought Sifla and Ollie was funny. Yeah, both of those shows are really good. They're all that, all that kind of stuff is, I feel, in the same wheelhouse as what we're trying to make. We're We're catering to the same audience. Yeah, pretty much. So it's all pretty good. I like that um, clip with the snail and the, the police snail and the wh- whatever it was. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. That thing's pretty cool. So, yeah, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I'm sure you're really busy and everything. So the guy thought you were a tool and now he's yeah. a stalker. It's nice. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> One right, person so at a time. Go. That's my philosophy. <laughs> thanks, man. All right, no problem. Take care. Hi, Darren.
Aaron. Very good. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Randall on the Tom Lycus Show. We're here with Seth Green. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you, Randall. I can't tell you how happy I am to have two great people that I really admire on the, tele- on the telephone. At wow. The same time. Well, thank you, Randall. Why, someone listening in? Yeah, I've been listening to you for a long time, and I'm gay, so surprise, surprise, you do have something to teach everybody. I was completely surprised. Seth, I know you're very accepting, too. I've seen your earlier work. I've been watching you. I'm entirely tolerant. You've been that werewolf on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I was, yes. And I've been pleasantly surprised at your work ever since. Um, I didn't expect much. But when Not I heard, one didn't expect uh, what you were a tool. They don't expect much. What is this? Oh, you know, I, didn't, I, I didn't. But when I heard your <laughs> he name, didn't expect what this guy works more than anybody in, in show business. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting much. No, but when I heard his name popping up in a whole lot of um, things that his I name liked. pops up every hour of every day. He's on some <laughs> channel somewhere. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. And you're a great, you're a great comedy writer. I, Thanks, man. I couldn't believe it. And you, I know you've done another cartoon too. Um, I work on uh, Family Guy as well. Yeah, Family Guy. But I just act on that. I don't write on it. But it's it's really good. Anyway, Robot Chicken. I'm a big fan. Oh, thanks, man. Um, superheroes living under the same house in the same household. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, the the real world parody. Yeah, the re- that's amazing. Thanks, that's man. amazing. But um, Aquaman cannot <laughs> even talk to the. I do have a superpower. I do. Yeah, uh, we always felt for him. He just seems kind of worthless. So. That's yeah, gotta eat that, a person up great. on the inside. And the and the the nuts. The the thing where everybody hits the hit oh, the, some, kick somebody. We did a, we did a sketch called "Ode to the Nutshot," which is like a classically oh, orchestrated that, William Tell overture and just yeah. classic nut shots. One after when <laughs> when I seen that um, when you were launching the show, uh huh, I, I knew that was instant. That was instant catch right there. Oh, I dig it, man! I'm glad you watched it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I, and Tom, I love you, man. You you have a lot to uh, you have a lot to teach a lot of people. I'm working on it. It's funny. He's got a chalkboard up here, and we're actually learning some (laughs) algorithms. That's exactly right. (laughs) I just want to say I love you. Keep up the great work. Thank you, man. Um, Tom, can you take me out um, Kennedy style? Senior or junior? (laughs) Junior. John F. Kennedy, junior style. Here you go. Once again, tasteless. It's dark. You know what I heard is that it was really foggy that night. Is that what it was? That's what they said. Yeah, it was mist. I heard she was nagging him that night. Oh, really? I yeah. think it had to do with altitude and visibility. <laughs> that, too. <laughs> uh, Brian, you're on with Seth Green on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brian. How you doing? Great. Hey, uh, I'm talking to two uh, cultural icons right now. It's awesome. Oh, check Whoa. us out. Hey, um, a question for Seth really quick. Uh, okay. What's the deal with the 15 minutes per episode thing? Whose idea was that? I mean, it's kind of cool because, uh, you know, there's no commercials or anything, but, you know, it's just, you know, it's just like they're action-packed. You know, yeah. they're 15 minutes long. but It's, I mean, it's, it's twofold. Cool, cramped in. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it has to do with two things. One, uh, Adult Swim programs in quarter hours, which is 15 minutes, lots of programming. And two, this show is so complicated to produce that to get 20 episodes, uh, you know, it, we could either do 20 15 minute episodes or we could do 11 22 minute episodes and just based on the programming that they've got that works best it's a ton of work to make the show so i'm not oh, yeah. we did it we did the half hour star wars special and that was just a brutal amount of work for one show yeah is there a chance you're gonna use tom now to use like a like it's 101 episode now you know what's funny we're uh he's a, done. He's a cultural icon now it's true we should get you on this we're we're done recording for the third season uh, but, yeah, you want to come do something funny? Absolutely. Sweet. Yeah. You heard it here first. There you go. Great. Blow me up, Tom. Here you go, Brian. Here we go. Well, I wasn't expecting much. I didn't. I thought you were a tool when you came in here, and it was great. <laughs> thanks, man. I like to defy your expectations. <laughs> Seth Green, thanks for coming in. Thanks, Tom. Good to see you. Robot Chicken Season 2 DVD available now, for Christ's sake. The Tom Likas Show.